Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'm Chris, this is the Salty Trips channel, and today we are doing another RV video where in a previous video, when we moved in over here, you saw that we having issues with our slide out. It was not coming in or out properly and it was like skipping gear something was broken but we are going to go over it try to figure out what's wrong and uh hopefully we got a good solution for it so stick around check it out all right i'm going to go right off the bat and say i am not a certified rv technician um I have been turning wrenches my whole life. I've been doing it for a living for 27 years, and uh, but not on RVs. But most mechanics are in general work on same a lot of the same principles. So hopefully, uh, I went to YouTube University and watched a ton of videos on uh, people having problems with these things and what to look for. Uh, so we're going to kind of go over that and uh, take some measurements and see if we can't come up with a solution. Uh, let's get down there and I'll show you exactly what we're going to do. All right, guys, we're underneath the slide here, and this is the um, through frame uh, slide outs where it's got little gears that drive this thing in and out. And what my first assumption was um, either one of these teeth on here were breaking, broken, or uh, maybe some teeth on here were broken. I watched another video where somebody was having the exact same problem and he was missing a couple of teeth off this gear here and so they replaced this whole thing and I've looked them over both of them uh, quite a bit and I can't find any broken teeth on all the way around everything so all those teeth are fine I can't find any issues with any of the teeth and nothing's bent or broken and then the next thing we go to do is we have to take some measurements. And the first measure we're, we're gonna take is from the bottom to here. And that's about five and a half inches. And then we're gonna take another measurement from all the way over here, all the way to that end. And that is like 44 and a quarter. So we've got five and a half, 44 and a quarter going this way and that way. We'll go over to the other one and check it out. And that's five and three quarter, which is within a quarter of an inch. So from my understanding, a quarter of an inch is acceptable tolerance. And that's probably 44 and maybe just a hair under three quarter going this way. So that's within a quarter inch. Uh, tolerance too. So hopefully the solution I think is going to work and the, what the problem is is uh, is fairly simple and should be easy and cheap but it's just something we're probably going to have to do every time we, we t take the slides in or out. We may come up with a more permanent solution which I will talk about a little bit later but uh, we'll see how this goes. All right guys so how this works is um, right underneath this weather stripping on the other side of it is just a plastic piece that this part um, is just a, a, a friction there's no rollers or anything or bearings or something like that that it rolls on it's just a piece of plastic that you know that's got that's kind of curved and tapered so this rides on it and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not but if you look up in here you can kind of see where there's either some friction going on or it's like you can see all the way down to the wood right there, a little bit of wood right there where it's, it's like grabbing and snagging. So I think it's just a friction problem between this under you know, smooth coating and that plastic that's in there. A hope is going to be the solution. It's pretty simple and we're gonna give it a try. Here's this three in one uh, slide out lubricant. It's a silicone lubricant that you, you can spray on your, on the bottom here and on your seals on the outside and stuff to help lubricate this thing as it goes in and out. And maybe just as it's, it's this is only a 2022, but maybe as it gets a little older, 
um, gets a little drier, uh, more times it goes in and out, it may start causing um, so the, the plastic to burr up or something like that. But we're gonna spray this down and see if it goes in and out a little bit better. All right, so we're gonna get into the in-command system, go to our slides, and we'll see how this goes. So far, so good. Not a single skip yet. Oh, where was that? Oh, that was happening down there at the other end. This is still has a gap. So I guess we're not having an issue with that side. We're just having an issue with the other side. Yes, I think this is getting worn out and that gear needs to be replaced. So that's what the problem is over here. So basically that one is skipping down at the, that end and this gear seems to be working fine. I thought this was the one that was having the problem, but apparently it's that end. Oh, maybe it might've been this one too, but the lubrication probably seems to help. So what I'm gonna have to do is, um, because basically the drive pushes that side out and there's a gear attached to it that runs down to this one that's attached to this gear. So that one's skipping, so it's not telling this one to turn when it's supposed to. So I'm just gonna have to push on this as it goes back out. And we're gonna send it back out and probably leave it out until we can get a replacement for that. So I'm just pushing this out with it. Luckily I got this handy dandy control or else I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to uh, do this by myself. All right, so we're gonna have to put an order in for one of these. So hopefully just replacing this will do it and we'll still keep this thing lubricated, uh, but uh, we'll have to order that and put that in. All right, guys, I just got off the phone with Lippard and uh, ordered the part. The way you find out how to get that part number is when you call them, they're gonna need your LCI number off of your trailer. And on these fifth wheel hitches, they're located on the side of your pin box. So if you just go to that sticker there, you can grab that number and you can give that to them and then they can look up the part number for you. So it's on its way. It was about $100 and then about $20 for shipping. So about 121 bucks with tax or whatever. And uh, this should be here in about a week. So we'll pick this video up right after that and get this thing installed. All right, guys. So it's been about two and a half weeks since I started making this video. And I got a whole leopard and they shipped out uh, the gear pack for a replacement and it was the wrong one. I sent back them this picture and a little video clip that I, I showed you guys earlier. You know, I'm like, hey, obviously this is the wrong one. I'm like, what's going on here? And they assured me they would overnight the correct one and I, I sent the other one back and lo and behold, they sent me the exact same one again. And I was like, oh my goodness. All right, so I get back on the phone with them. I'm like, hey, you guys sent me the wrong one again. You know, this is the right one, what it looks like. I sent a picture and everything. I'm like, oh my God, I'm I'm sorry. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that we get this escalated to a supervisor, make sure this gets correct. And then uh, they overnighted another one, but which took, you know, there were some shipping delays, but it took a little bit longer and exact same one again. So they sent me three gear packs that were the wrong ones. And uh, so I finally got a hold of a supervisor. She, Amanda, shout out to you if you're out there watching this. Uh, she went out of her way to help me. And because like where you order from and 
uh, where you get shipped out from may not be the same place. So there might have been some miscommunications there, whatever. So anyway, she got a hold of them, sent them the picture, but hey, make sure you get this one, not this one. And I don't know if there was like a uh, been labeled wrong or whatever, but finally they sent me the right one, this one here. So uh, anyway, they gave me two of these. They said, don't bother shipping these these two back because uh, uh, it's going to cost them more to ship both these back than it would to just let me have them. So if anybody's looking for the two and a half inch gear pack, uh, just email uh, salty trips RV at gmail.com and uh, maybe we can work something out. But apparently the the spindle and the gears are exactly the same. It's just a different width. There's two inch and two and a half inch. Anyway, so we got the right piece in. We're going to go put that in and uh, hopefully this fixes our problem. But we'll get on there and we'll finish this up and uh, get this fiasco over with. Well, they say the first thing you need to do is if you're going to replace a gear pack is make sure the slide is about halfway in because you have to jack it up a little bit. And if it's halfway in, it'll create a pivot point so that you can take the pressure off the gears. As you can see here, there's just way too much play in that. So, hopefully this will take care of it. First thing that comes off is this little bolt right here. Alleviate some tension off of that. I'm gonna put this nut right back on the tip of it. Just tap it a little bit. Take that nut off so I can pull it out. And a good idea is to just put everything back together so you don't lose pieces and parts. All right, and while we have this off, um, now we're gonna adjust the timing on that side. We're gonna take a measurement from here to here and uh, make sure that end is the same because we can just roll this. We can use the crescent wrench and turn it to roll that in or out so that this matches. So that when we put it back together, uh, the timing will be exact on both sides so we'll do that real quick all right i just measured both of them and they're both like 31 and a half right on the dot so we don't actually have to roll it in or out but it's pretty simple all you have to do is put this on here and twist this way for it to go out and that way for it to go back in and um you know you can just uh, fine tune it a little bit to make sure that's equal distance apart because you want both these going in and out at the same rate so now all we should have to do is put the new gear pack in. And we'll just basically do that in the reverse order that we just did. That seemed to be a little difficult to get in, so we'll put that in first. And we'll just tighten everything up a little bit. All right, so we should just lower this jack down and see how it goes. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go in, then all the way back out. Oh man, no popping yet. Oh, the sound looks good, I don't wanna.
All right, that's good. Let's go all the way out. And so far so good. No gears jumping. The dogs are in the bedroom, so I hear them howling. And perfect. So that seemed to have done it. Um, wow, um, I'm impressed uh, that that wasn't too tough. Um, don't be afraid to do this. Uh, it just takes a little bit of elbow grease and a couple of wrenches and you can uh, fix your slide out. All right, guys. So the slide's fixed, running smooth like butter. So that's fantastic. Um, thanks for coming along and uh, doing this with me. Hope you got something out of it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for coming along. If you want to follow all of our adventures with RVs, uh, full-time living, trucks, travel, towing, all that jazz, uh, hit the subscribe button, notification bell, let you know when all our videos come out. And we'll see you guys next week.